this work this time. Okay, good. Sorry, I'm just a little bit to, to uh, resume the whole thing. Um, welcome to the show. Uh, today, I wanted to kind of go over uh, businesses that are still operating within uh, Russia. Uh, Burger King apparently is one of them. Uh, and is, this article says that it's because due to legal reasons. I believe, see, yeah, franchisees in the country, uh, they're staying open, obviously. It's the only way they can make money in regards to that. Uh, so that, that makes sense why they can't fully close in regards to being in, in Russia. Uh, because like McDonald's and other places like that, that allow franchisees. Uh, legally, they can't tell the they, they they can't tell the store, I guess, what to do in regards to whether it be open or closed, as long as they're paying their franchisee tax or, or whatever in order to be using the trademark for, uh, of that establishment. Let's see. I, <laughs> I kind of like the this part of British American Tobacco or BAT, uh, the cigarette manufacturer, uh, which brands itself Lucky Strike and. Rothmans has said it will suspend Temple Investment and scale back marketing and business activities, but will not completely pause operations because it's, I, I'm guessing they still want to keep a, a, at least a decent uh, relationship with the uh, country. Uh, we are deeply concerned about the conflict of, uh, in Ukraine, the safety and well-being of our people. Uh, you sell cigarettes. I'm not really sure that the safety and well-being of uh, people is really the first thing that crosses your mind, but whatever. Anyway, so, so we are deeply concerned about the conflict of Ukraine, the safety and well-being of our people there and across the region is our first priority. Uh, they start selling weed. Anyway, uh, we have full local establishments of 1,000 people in Ukraine and 2,500 in, in Russia. Okay, so because they have more in Russia than they have Ukraine, so they would take more, they would, take, they would, they would effectively take a bigger loss financially if they closed their operations in Russia. Our thoughts are with them all at this uh, incredibly difficult time. The company said in the statement uh, via The Guardian, okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see, Nestle. Nestle is not exactly the best company in the first place. They're, uh, they're, uh, uh, the labor rules are really lacking, and I guess they don't, uh, they don't uh, respect their employees. So you'll see a pattern here because it seems like the the companies that uh, that provide the worst for your health uh, type of um, products are the ones that are suspending or suspending certain portions of the business model in in Russia. So maybe it's a good thing they're doing that. Um, let's see. A, a spokesperson said for ITV as a food company and employer. We also have a responsibility towards the people of Russia and are more than 7,000 employees, most of them, most of whom are locals. We will continue to ensure a reliable supply of safe and essential food products to the local people in the country. A diverse range of essential food products, including baby food, breakfast cereals, uh, we have consistently stayed the course also been doing, during difficult times to serve the local uh, people who need it the most. Mars bars. Let's see. Uh, another food, uh, major food and drink company will operate in Russia is uh, still operation, uh, operating in Russia is Mars. However, the company providing food and initial cash donations with $2 million to Ukraine. Uh, CEO Grant Reed said, per the company website, we are, where we are appalled by what is happening in Ukraine are striving to provide our courageous Ukrainian associates with the support they need their safety is our absolute priority and teams of mars association has has been working digitally to provide shelter financial security and aid question is and to, well, at least to me was uh, is how much will they want back in return after the conflict is over we have to remember these are two uh, the backer of the ukraine uh, of Ukraine, uh, the U.S. government uh, is a sovereign, uh, so sovereign country, obviously, and so is Russia. So you have two mega powers who had the ability to create and deploy as much finance as they see fit to their own uh, 
to their own uh, society, to their own people. U.S. doesn't do as much as they should. In a long, there's so much more the U.S. could be doing for 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 this uh, for people living here. So much more, uh, but nevertheless, uh, Russia. If 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 uh, if all that Putin said uh, two, a few weeks ago that he was going to do, if there if he's actually going through with that, then in my mind. Uh, as a policy, they are in better shape as a country than here. Uh, that's just how, I mean, yeah. I mean, it sucks, but that, but that is the truth as far as that part goes. If, you, if he truly went through with what he said he was going to do uh, for his country during this time, uh, then he effectively he's in that case in policy wise and if he continue if he goes through with it they're a better country because the united states should be doing what what he's doing for his country but uh the, this country is so capitalistic that it doesn't matter it it anyway i'm going i'm going on a rant anyways i and I actually i have a few announcements uh after the after all this so bear with me as far as the part goes anyway so also Hilton, Hyatt, Marriott, and Ochre, Ochre? Um, uh, Hotels. Uh, hospitality groups and hotel chains are facing mounting pressure to end their uh, Russian operations. Hilton and Hyatt have halted new developments and suspended investments in Russia, while Hilton also closed to Moscow uh, corporate office, or it's corporate office, excuse me. Uh, Ecor also announced that it has suspended all planned openings and future developments in Russia, but confirmed it will continue to operate in Russia in some capacity as we play a key role in supporting employees, local communities, uh, non-governmental uh, organizations, and international media on the ground. Interesting. So in other words, they own and operate international media. Uh, anyway, so let's see. We have never left the country in turmoil and, pre and presently have no plans to do so, it told trade news site Hotel New Now. Uh, Mary has not closed any hotels in Russia, but said it is working with charitable organizations on the ground focused on providing meals, health care, and safe water for Ukraine. Shell. The oil giant released a statement to say the company was appalled by the war in Ukraine and called its decision to purchase Russia oil difficult, but it's not going to do it. Uh, Shell explained it in its statement that without a uninterrupted supply of crude oil to refineries, the energy dis uh, industry cannot assure continued provision of essential products to people across Europe over the weeks ahead this is why I, this is why i was thinking that since uh united states have been pumping out more oil than usual uh getting into the oil, gas and oil business on an official uh, an official way um i'm thinking that uh that that oil is going to europe and other places that are not getting oil from russia uh i think that in order to um to keep other countries from having to do that but at the same time, since we're not keeping the oil here uh, domestically, to a certain degree, that's one of the reasons why gas is so expensive, because we're sending what we could be saving here off to, uh, off to foreign countries, um, which uh, in the end will actually add to GDP as far as that part goes, but it won't add to GNP, which is gross national product, you know, stuff we keep here. Anyway. So let's see, Shell explained a statement that without an interrupted supply of crude oil to refineries, the energy industry and can I assure continued pro provision of essential products to uh, people across Europe or uh, Europe over the week, uh, weeks ahead. And the company said cargoers okay, from alternative sources would not have a right in time to avoid disruption from any Russia oil if purchases will go towards mentioning all the... Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I figured that I don't watch uh, United States mainstream media because they're all liars uh, in one way or the other, um, depending on, the, on who's in office, um, I figured I'd go to Al Jazeera uh, to get some of the news in regards to uh, Russia and other things because they're actually more truthful than our own media here, which sucks hard. 
but anyway, uh, my own opinions, of course, uh, and I use different languages than most YouTubers. Anyway, so let's see. Russia's war on Ukraine has been criticized by protesters who took to the streets Russia, uh, Russian priests, academics, and cultural figures. Thousands have been arrested for participating in anti-war rallies, and many have fled the country amid a growing crackdown and worsening economy as Western sanctions piled up. But uh, how representatives, the representative, these critics are of Russia as a whole is uncertain. A recent survey by the independent pollster Levetta showed that more than 80% support Russian military's actions in Ukraine. As some observers noted, opinion polls might be skewed by the political climate. Prison terms for spreading disinformation, for instance, may have left respondents less than honest. Nevertheless, it would be wrong to dismiss these numbers entirely. Uh, back in 2014, after Russia's annexation of Crimea, President Vladimir Putin's popular popularity surged to a record 89%, although that was a relatively bloodless and less massive, messy campaign. Uh, to be true, to be honest, Biden would love to have 50% approval rating. But anyway, uh, the black and orange uh, Saint uh, George ribbon, a symbol of the victory in World War II and more generally Russian military glory, uh, became an ambiguous uh, sight. This kind of boost is what political scientists call the rally around the flag effect, when the crisis supports an uh, otherwise unpopular leader, kind of like right now Ukraine. I'm not saying that's a uh, I'm not saying that's a fake war, but look at the timing. Anyway, um, the current rise in Putin's popularity was expected because of the dynamics of collective identity and its silence during any foreign confrontation at war is the ultimate means of bringing the national identity to the center of Russians' world uh, view. Uh, political scientist Golnaz uh, Sharafuddinova, I hope I got that somewhat right, uh, told Al Jazeera. While the days of the war, this is all in quotes, uh, for those listening, uh, while the early days of the war in Ukraine saw some confusion, consolidation in society grew with each day. Sanctions and how they were perceived and conveyed also played into hardening a uh, defense stance vis a vis the West. Uh, he says, argued, I'm guessing he uh, argued that Russians are frustrated with new sanctions and feel resentment towards Western n uh, nations, which may have strengthened a sense of group identity. Uh, Putin's popularity. Putin has, Putin has in the past enjoyed popularity for bringing stability and relatively a relative prosperity to the Russians. After the chaotic Crimea, a uh, uh, crime run in the 1990s, excuse me. At the same time, many Russians have been increasingly dismayed by Western nations in their view. Their country, once a superpower that had sent the that sent the first man into space, has been increasingly disregarded on the international level or international stage. They have accused, have crept up to the mix. Presidential election. Uh, Janeta, I was like, what did uh, Yoga and, and breaking international law two years later to bomb its ally Serbia into submission. And Putin is seen as challenging the U.S. self appointed role as a world's policeman. Uh, okay, uh, according to a 68 year old, uh, Valentina, an academic from St. Petersburg, Ukraine is just another one of the United States projects. Uh, in quotes, after the coup d'etat in Ukraine in 2014, which took place with the participants with the participation of the United States, the country came under uh, external control, she told Algier, uh, Al Jazeera, referring to the maiden revolution that led to the removal of then President Viktor Yanukova, uh, uh, Yanukovych, which critics like Valentina had dismissed as a Washington orchestrated coup. Over the years since the coup, Ukraine has become the poorest country in Europe and is flooded with all sorts of weapons, including, including biological. Uh, for a reason, for Russia, this is a danger, dangerous and aggressive neighbor. I believe that Russia was forced to take the step. Russia has repeatedly accused the U.S. of development, uh, developing biological weapons in Ukraine. U.S. officials have acknowledged bankrolling laboratories in Ukraine for the study of deadly pathogens for the purpose of disease control. U.S. officials openly supported the 2013-14 revolution and leaked conversations 
uh, revealed that then Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland uh, picking her favorites for Ukraine's new government, including hardline anti-Russian politician uh, Arsenia, uh, Arsen, Arsenia uh, Yatsenyuk. Sorry if I got that one wrong too. A few weeks after the lead, uh, he was appointed prime minister. Uh, Valentina considered the current Ukrainian government. Yeah, uh, Valentina uh, considered the current Ukrainian government to be entirely a puppet of the United States and believed uh, believed uh, uh, President uh, Vladimir uh, Vladimir uh, Zelensky could not compromise with Russia even if he wanted to. The White House, she believes, is willing to sacrifice Ukraine to wage a proxy war against uh, against Russia. In quotes, even if he had made such an attempt, he would probably have been claimed, uh, been able to claim the Nobel Peace Prize, but obviously he would not live to see it as he would be eliminated immediately. And apparently this actually already happened as far as the part goes recently anyway. Uh, she said, Zelensky, United States will uh, wage war in Ukraine to the last drop, uh, wait, to the last drop of, U- of Ukrainian blood. Russians who, who back their country's so-called mil, uh, special military operations also believe the U- Ukrainian government has been captured by neo-Nazi elements, which ties into a long history of Ukrainian nationalism being seen as hostile to Russia. But despite Ukrainian nationalists consistently asserting themselves against Russia, even collaborating with Nazi forces during World War II, many agree with the Putin and see the two nations as one of the same. In quotes, even Russian, have, every Russian has relatives in Ukraine, and also every Ukrainian has relatives in Russia. It is po- it is impossible to distinguish them. They are physically one per uh, one people speaking the same language. Uh, some uh, we, same language said Sergey uh, Kalenik. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. 36 year old PR professional in Moscow who was a comic series. Super Putin cast the Russian president as a hero. Uh, Ukraine is an integral part of Russia, just like Wales is for the UK and anywhere, uh, anyone who thinks otherwise is not a Russian person. In 2014, Ukrainian ultranationalists took an active part in street fighting with the Perkut riot police during the Maiden Revolution. Uh, the following year, dozens of pro-Russian activists were uh, burned alive in a trade union building in Odessa, and a notorious par- paramilitary group, uh, Azov, which attracted neo-Nazis, was formed to co- combat pro-Russian separatists in Ukrainian's east. The narrative that Ukraine is a country overrun by Nazi neo-Nazi has often been touted by Putin, who stated. War goals include uh, war goals include uh, denazifying the country. Uh, Kalinick considered the special operation as the evasion is officially called a calculated, precise, preemptive strike to knock out an opponent and force them into an agreement. Conflict, uh, conflict, it seems, was unavailable. Unavailable, some of that. I can never, I can never say that word very well with, with or without big teeth. Anyway. A turning point in attitudes towards Ukraine was on May 2nd, 2014, when Odessa, uh, when in Odessa, uh, nationalists herd, uh, herded unarmed Russians into a building and burnt them alive, uh, Kalinik, uh, Kalinik told uh, Al Jazeera. The people who did this were not punished. The act was not condemned, and instead, Nazis were, were the swastikas like the Azov Battalion remained in power. So the whole system needed to change. Ukrainians are held hostage by nationalists. After all, what did Ukrainians vote for in the last elections? Zelensky promised to end the war in Donbass, restore democracy and free uh, entrepreneurship. He accused Zelensky of destroying Ukraine's economic uh, economy, banning opposition parties, and cracking down on independent media which hold some truth leading up to the invasion. Uh, Zelensky shut down several TV stations seen as pro-Russia and had opposition oligarchs arrested at raising concerns about freedom of speech. Most importantly, he began to get, uh, gather uh, atomic weapons and Nazi battalions, said Kalinik. Does this look like the will of the, of the people? No, it's a, to- it's a totalitarian... totalitarian 
a dictatorship. Uh, in Russia, the state has regularly been accused of pressuring independent media, and since the war began, all non-state media outlets have either been forced to shut or suspend their operations. I believe RT America was actually forced to shut down, period. So you had a lot like Lee Camp, uh, Jesse Ventura, uh, his son, uh, and other people who worked for uh, RT America, uh, that whole thing was shut down. So I don't know what they're doing now, but I know that uh, I've seen the camp be on Twitter once while, but and given every uh, give an interview, uh, I think on um, Jimmy Dore and other places. But anyway, that was I believe that was uh, America that that shut them down here. Anyway, uh, let's see, uh, uh, Kalinick was not too worried about them calling such newspapers and websites. Disgusting fascist establishments of badly naked propaganda, but he still managed to access a variety of news across uh, news sources despite the crackdown and in, and is particularly disappointed with Western media coverage and his emphasis on alleged Russia crimes. This is why I don't actually watch that shit. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, almost everyone has fallen for primitive military propaganda. He said, "They cannot uh, even make fakes." The uh, they cannot even make fakes. The uh, Mariupol uh, maternal, uh, uh, Maternity Hospital, a drama theater with children looting, uh, uh, looting by Russian soldiers. Unless you stood in front of a green screen, these cheap productions did not stand up to criticism. He added, uh, agreeing with the Kremlin's claim that uh, war crimes have been staged by the Ukrainians. Okay, let's see if you get that one. Okay. Okay. Let's repeat number now. Anyway, uh, according to ABC News, uh, U.S. Turk as Putin's daughter, adult adult addressed the atrocities witnessed as uh, in Buta uh, were announced the, uh, uh, when announcing the sanctions. Excuse me. But, uh, I've never actually read it. So there you go. Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin's two adult daughters, uh, Maria and Katrina, uh, Katrina, I guess, uh, are included in the latest round of sanctions on Russia. For, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Before delivering an uh, unrelated to this building trade union legislative conference, President new sanctions on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday, at one city of uh, Kiev streets as Russian troops were behind their back, civilians executed in cold blood, and bodies dumped into massive graves, a sense of brutality, and to see there's nothing had to come together, and together we rising uh, economic costs and ratcheting up the pain for Putin and further increased Russia's economic isolation. He uh, continued. Yeah, no, no, actually, if it costs more to export stuff from all over the world during this time, it gets more expensive for the people who live here because the businesses and export businesses that export and, or sorry, import those uh, here, uh, they had to cut, it's an extra cost on them. So therefore, they turn it around and, and it's an extra cost on, on consumers. So if anything, it gives them more money as far as that work goes, at least in my opinion, anyway. Uh, the new round of sanctions include a ban on all new investments in Russia, increased sanctions on two major financial institutions in Russia, uh, Sberbank and Alpha Bank, uh, also, as well as major Russian state-owned enterprises, sanctions on Russian government officials and their family members, including Putin's daughters. Has he already, I wonder if he's, I forgot if he's already uh, done that to Putin himself. Or he's, or they're waiting to do it to him, and just you know, just getting his daughters, which to me is kind of cowardly. But whatever. Um, let's see. We, along with our European allies, are adding the names to the list of Russian elites and families we are sanctioning. Biden added, but not calling out Putin's daughter by name. Look, the, these oligarchs and their family members are not allowed to hold onto their wealth in Europe or the United States and help the yachts work, uh, wait, and keep the yachts worth hundreds of millions of dollars, luxury vacation homes while children in Ukraine are being killed, displaced from their homes every single day. What about the people the United States have killed themselves? Have they been, have, have these, have, have the politicians that, that voted for all this, have the generals that did, did this, have their, has their money been sanctioned? I don't think so. Anyway, uh, let's see, we all the allies look, uh, look at these. Uh, okay, no worries about that. 
According to the White House, the U.S. has sanctioned Putin's two adult daughters, Russian Foreign Minister uh, Sergei uh, Lavrov's wife and daughter, as well as members of Russia's Security Council, including former President and Prime Minister of Russia, Dmitry uh, Medvedev, and Prime Minister Mikhail Mish uh, Mishusin. Uh, the a senior administration official said on an earlier call with reporters that the U.S. has re uh, reasons to believe that Putin and his cronies hide their wealth with, with family members and said, we believe that many of Putin's assets them themselves at the providing the, the system and freezing. Uh, the White House said in a uh, face in fact sheet uh, announcing the sanctions. I wonder if they're going to sanction uh, City Group and sanction J.P. Morgan Chase because they've actually proceeded to process the payments on those U.S. Uh, uh, bonds. Since Putin launched his invasion of Ukraine late February, wait a minute. It's interesting because I just, I, I, I just saw that the United States gave Putin $18 billion in March. Now, this is the case, and they start in the invaded Ukraine in February, wouldn't that mean that the, U, that the U.S. has given uh, uh, the Russia uh, $18 billion during a war that they are supposedly fighting against uh, Russia through Ukraine? That seems kind of odd to me. The U.S. has sanctioned more than 140 oligarchs and their family members and more than 400 Russian government officials and has now fully blocked more than two thirds of the Russian banking sector, which held about four, 1.4 trillion assets before the war. In conjunction with the G7 and European Union, the US also announced Wednesday it was cutting off Russians ability to use its previously frozen central bank funds to make debt payments, forcing it to find other sources of dollars to avoid de a defaulting. Well, yeah, they use their they, they would be using rubles and demanding that anybody who does business with them open a rubles account at the central bank. Uh, in his remarks Wednesday, Biden has applauded corporate Amer uh, corporate America for stepping up for a change and choosing to leave Russia market uh, on their own accord. Bullshit. Russia will very likely lose its status as a major economy and will continue a, lo uh, a long descent into economic, financial, and technology, or te te technical, damn. Anyway, isolation, a senior administration's official told reporters. According to the White House, under the new sanctions, Russia's GDP will contract up to 15% this year, wiping out the last 15 years of economic gains Inflation already spiking above 15 is, is expected to rise, and supply chains will be further disrupted as more than 600 private sector companies have already left the Russian market. Well, that's kind of opposite of what I just said in regards to businesses still operating within Russia. Uh, let's see. Uh, at this rate, it will go back to Soviet-style living standards from 1980s, the official, the official added. Asked if the U.S. was concerned about any downsides and downsides to detaching Russia from the global market to the point where it would it would become more concerned with disrupting it rather than getting back in, the official seemingly brushed off the concern, saying that the U.S. was using a negative feedback loop to deter Putin, but that can be stopped if Putin also stops. None of this is a permanent. The only aspect of that that's permanent of the lives uh, of the lives that have been taken or uh, that he's already taken, and he can never bring those back. Able to respond to the conditions on the ground and to create leverage for the, uh, for the announcement Sunday, saying he was seeking further sanctions in response. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan warned this week the White House acknowledges that further sanctions against Russia will not change Putin's behavior overnight. Sanctions are intended to impose costs, so Russia can't carry on these grotesque ass, 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 no, acts without paying a, a severe price for it. Well, maybe that's why we're that's why we have so much in place because of all the crap we've done around the world. Anyway, uh, let's see, impose costs. Russia can't carry on grotesque. Okay, the, the money's briefing. We don't expect that shift in behavior will be caused by sanctions overnight or in a week. It will take time to grind down the elements of Russia power within the Russia economy to hit their industrial base, hard to hit in source of revenue that could that have propped up the war and propped up the 
uh, kleptocracy in Russia, he added. <sighs> yeah, no, I just think it's going to get even worse for the United States. And uh, let me just kind of check out some because. Let me pause it. Well, as you can see, um, it looks like um, the ruble has actually gained in value, not gone down in value so far. I mean, it, obviously, uh, as this war goes on, it probably it may go down. I don't know. We'll have to find out as time goes on. But as you can see, it's not really doing much in regards to the value of the ruble. Uh, it's actually gone up. And as you can see, um, the uh, USD, the euro, uh, has gone up by 19, uh, 19 cents, I guess. So, I mean, it looks like either way, uh, things are going up in regards to value. Uh, let's see, US ruble is actually minus uh, 92, 92%. So, so, I mean, it doesn't look like this is hurting Russia right now, uh, but who knows how, who knows how it goes in the future. Anyway, so one of the things I wanted to, I'm trying to uh, recreate a couple of things, not the YouTube channel, uh, but my Patreon and uh, my Substack. Uh, I'll be starting to do is uh, two different things will be uh, MMT related uh, authors or uh, literature, but one different on each one. Uh, so on my Patreon, I uh, believe patreon.com slash just Calvin learn MMT uh, or learns MMT. Um, anyway, uh, I will be, I will be posting stuff up there uh, from uh, David Kelton or from uh, Warren Mosler or somewhere else, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, same thing with Substack. So I'm going to be uh, starting that uh, next week. So starting Monday, I believe uh, I'll be doing those three things and it'll be a daily thing. So, uh, anyways, that's that was what that's what I wanted to do as far as the part goes. I'll put I'll start putting the um, the URLs for all those um, once I start doing them. So, anyway, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope that uh, what I said about what, what I said about the whole thing uh, didn't put you off too much in regards to <laughs> in regards to subscribing. But if it did, okay uh at least share it to, if if you agreed with what with what i was saying and agree with the articles i was saying uh subscribe uh share uh like comment uh and peace out for now thanks for watching and listening